Zoom meeting ends at like 11.45, but we're going to end at 11.35 because, you know, you guys may have other classes and, and other things. So we're going to stick with the registrar appointed time, even if the Zoom meetings are giving us more or, or whatever time. So, you know, we'll, we're going to, we're just going to be flexible, you know, this semester with um, the technology. All right. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I introduce myself. I'm uh, Dr. Wilson. Um, and I'm a, uh, um, my email address, uh, e.wilson at northeastern.edu, is a great way to contact me um, this semester. My phone number um, is actually the office, the math department office number. Um, <clears throat> and this is my office in the math department when I'm there, but I'm not there this semester. I'm um, working remote. Um, so this whole class is going to be remote as well. Um, just, uh, you know, keep that in mind. If you need to contact me, um, my email is the best bet. I check it um, multiple times in a day. Um, I want to point out there's um, the chat line in our uh, Zoom meeting, but um, I have a hard time. I, I can't pay attention to the um, chat line as I'm doing the lectures and answering questions and whatever. Um, so if you guys have a question that you want answered right away or something doesn't make sense or you need me to go clarify something, unmute your audio and say something, okay, so that I will stop and then talk, um, talk and ask you about it. Um, it is, uh, we can pretend that this is like a regular lecture where we are um, in front of each other, okay? So feel free to um, stop me and interrupt me. That's the whole point of having a live lecture is that you get to um, talk to me as we um, are working right now. Great thing about it. Um, I think, I know that Zoom says it um, and it puts a little blinking red light. I think I'm also required to tell you at each class um, that we're recording these classes. Um, <clears throat> so if you don't feel comfortable having yourself recorded, that's totally fine. You can just mute your audio, mute your video. But if you want to talk to me about something or ask me questions, you know, with your video or your audio on, you can come to office hours. I will not be recording office hours. Um, so feel free to come there and then um, we can, you know, we can talk because those will not be recorded. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so some things I just want to talk about. Um, the Zoom links for the lectures are on our Canvas page under Zoom meetings. Those are our lectures. Okay, the office hours, um, this is the link here, which um, this, I actually copied and pasted this. This is um, taken from our homepage on our Canvas page, as well as their syllabus, right? Um, this right here link <clears throat> is the link for our recurring office hour meeting time, which is Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, one o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon. These are all Eastern Standard Times, our meeting ID and our passcode. We need the passcode. <laughs> so I've had colleagues of mine, um, their Zoom meetings have gotten hacked, and so we need passcodes to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, our Canvas page is going to be really helpful um, for you, and I just want to point out some things. I think I said it a little bit in the announcement that I sent out last week. Um, <clears throat> on our Canvas page, there's a whole section at the beginning, which I can expand and collapse, so, you know, because it takes up a lot of stuff. There's a lot of reading material there for you. Um, some of it's background info. Um, some of it's like, um, you, like maybe you need some brush up on, you know, some algebra or geometry or whatever. There's um, some stuff in there. Some of it's like uh, notes that are really detailed that the course um, content was based on um, <coughs> that the person um, who made this class years ago um, came up with this kind of, it isn't really a textbook, but it's uh, um, his notes on all these concepts. And it's actually quite interesting and fun to read. Um, <coughs> so that's all under reading material. Um, the class is set up in three different segments um, by chapters, chapter one, two, and three. Um, the uh, course notes, the information for um, each chapter is posted at the very beginning, that reading material stuff, chapter one notes, chapter two. Um, those you are welcome to look at. I will do the examples in those course notes in addition to extra examples that um, I have come up with um, that are going to help you. So the um, you could definitely just read the course notes and get the sort of bare bones idea about like what's going on in the class. Um, you know, watching the lecture videos, um, watching, uh, coming to lecture is really going to help you um, understand what's going on. So we've got three different chapters. Um, <clears throat> now, what's going to happen in each class, I'm trying to model it based on um, when I actually teach it in person, because um, it's a fun class to teach in person. So what I usually do in person is um, I talk for, you know, about a half hour, sometimes 45 minutes, and then, um, and then I pass out classwork. Right, so classwork, this is classwork for chapter 1.1. I pass out classwork, um, and then classwork are like sample problems for you to work through and to try out. And um, 
you know, practice some of the concepts that we've been talking about in that lecture that day. It's going to be so helpful because some of this stuff um, can be complex. I assume basically that you don't have any knowledge of it coming in. So we take um, take everything from scratch, but the classwork is really going to help you. Um, and you can download the classwork um, ahead of time before each lecture or when I say at the end of now when I'm talking um, I'll say okay now we're gonna um, do some classwork um, then I'll probably stop the recording but I'll keep the zoom lecture going I'll stop the recording and then um, I'll work through the classwork problems at the same time that you can go onto our um, canvas page by week it'll tell you like what chapter and what week we're on um, and then you can look at the classwork there. So <clears throat> normally in a regular class, I um I don't collect the classwork because I'm right there. I can see who's working on it. People come up and ask me questions. We can do stuff. So I would hope my expectation is that um, when I say, okay, I'm going to stop talking, um, time for classwork now, that um, that you guys would then take a look at the classwork that's online and you would start working on it. And then you can ask me questions on it for like the rest of the time frame for our class as practice, basically for all the material. Um, what I'd like, this is under classwork and participation here, is that classwork, um, I'd like for you to, by the end of the day, you have 24 hours to do it, um, you know, to take a picture of it and um, <coughs> upload it to our assignments. It counts as, as part of your grade. It's a really minimal part of your grade. And honestly, I'm just looking to see if you tried it, okay? Did you make a concerted effort? Um, I'm not going to grade it for content, so don't worry if you, like, have no idea, you're trying to figure it out. You can even write on there, I completely have no idea. It'll give me some feedback. Um, but hopefully you are trying it in class and, and you're making an effort to do it. It's really going to help you learn it. So um, <clears throat> in the past, I haven't collected it, but I'm going to collect it this time just um, to make sure because I can't see um, who's working on it. But um, let's say, you know, in each class um, you work on it and then you can just take a quick picture and upload a PDF um, to our um, Canvas page to the assignment for that classwork. Um, and I, I can't remember what the due date is. It may even be like when we um, pass in the homework for the um, chapter section. It's flexible. Um, <clears throat> if you don't pass it in, I'll let you pass it in whenever, okay? I mean, like, you know, don't worry. I'll give you a zero when I grade it. But then if you finish it, if you do it, then you can hand it in to me, show it to me, and then I'll give you a grade for it. So, you know, don't sweat it. But it's really just based on effort. Are you trying it? Okay. Um, also, um, we have in the class uh, problem sets, okay? The problem sets are a little bit more involved, um, complicated questions, and um, <clears throat> you will be able to, uh, let's see, is it, okay. Oh, yeah, I just got notified there's a chat question. Let me just see, um, are you sharing? Yeah, you know, I'm sharing my screen because uh, is, um, can everybody see? You should be able to see me talking, and then I'm also sharing my screen, which is this um, uh, camera here where I'm, I'm pointing right now. If, oh, you get, good. Okay, great. Yeah, you'll definitely want to see that because that's where I'm going to do all the lecture notes. Um, hmm. So the problem sets, um, I just uploaded those. They're also, so you've got on our main Canvas page, we've got the reading material. Right below that are problem sets. So I just po posted problem set number one. Um, problem set number one, you guys can work together on, but you need to pass in individually. Um, you're going to um, pass that in to me when we take our exam. So that won't be due for like another month. Um, and and it, like when you first look at it, say so you're gonna be like, I have no idea how to do that. And that's because you don't, you haven't learned it yet, but you'll learn it as we go. Um, it's kind of meant to be um, like a little bit more involved questions than the homework problems, okay? The homeworks, um, homework problems are due um, every time we have a quiz, I'll collect the homework for um, that section for those, like if we have, I think next week we have a quiz on chapter 1.1 and 1.2. Um, and I'll collect the homeworks for 1.1 and 1.2. And I'll tell you um, about the homework in just a sec. So, <clears throat> so the homework now, let's see, uh, let me take a look. So the homework um, in your syllabus, it tells you like each day, each class period, um, what topic we're going to be covering. And then on the side, it says like what the homework problem is that corresponds to that. It says homework problems one through five or six through 10 or whatever, okay? So it tells you like what chapter and what homework problems are there. <clears throat> when we have a quiz, you'll pass in only those homework problems that correspond to those chapter sections, okay? I'm going to give you a clue. The, um, I'm posting homework problems um, from chapter one on each of the homework things, but the homework problems themselves are posted under reading material, and my, my hint is I've actually also posted homework solutions under the reading material. I know it seems strange. I posted the homework problems and the solutions, 
the solutions are there so that <clears throat> you can do the homework problems and check your answers. Did you do it right? Um, if you're totally like, I have no idea what I'm doing on this stuff thing, just write down the answer, right? I mean, in theory, you could just copy down all the answers and pass that in, okay? So there's really no excuse not to pass in the homework at all because you actually have the solutions up. Um, but the solutions are there to help you um, to kind of know like what's being asked or how you solve it. And, and certainly you can always ask me questions about the homework um, in office hours um, is a really good time to do it. Sometimes we'll do it in class too. It's, it, it'll get a little bit harder because I'm going to be working through classwork problems right now. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so we have, um, I think they're about like um, uh, seven or eight quizzes um, this semester um, and the quizzes are worth 5% of our grade, 35% uh, of our grade, sorry. And we've got two midterm tests. The exams are based on chapter one and chapter two. So our first exam will be at the end of October, I believe. And then, um, no, the beginning of October. I think it takes about a month or so. And then our next exam um, is at the end of chapter two. So it'll just be all of chapter one for exam one, all of chapter two for exam two. And then um, chapter three is a very short chapter. There's only a couple sections in that and we just have quizzes on those. Um, and there's no final exam, but there is a final project. Um, as we go along in the semester, I'll give you more information about the project itself. Um, and you can work in groups of um, no more than like two or three people on the project. Okay, so the quizzes and the um, exams you do on your own, <clears throat> the homeworks, the problem sets, and the classwork, you can work with each other and talk to each other about, but you have to pass in your own work because I have to grade just your work, okay? So um, keep that in mind uh, when we're doing this stuff here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else too. Um, all these things should be posted online. The classwork should be posted up online and the homework should be posted on our Canvas page. Oh yeah, <clears throat> when we take the quizzes and the tests, what's going to happen is um, there'll be an availability window. So that's kind of why I'd like to know, <clears throat> excuse me, what your um, time zone is. If you can tell me, you know, if you're Eastern time or, you know, Pacific time or, or whatever, send me an email just so I can kind of make note of it um, and keep track. Um, what I'll do for the quizzes and the tests is this. Um, usually it's a 24 hour availability window. So like the quiz will become available, let's say for example, at noon on Thursday, and it will be available until noon on Friday, the next Friday, that, you know, 24 hours later, you'll have any time within that 24 hour window to start the quiz, okay? But it's a timed quiz and you'll only have 30 minutes on the quizzes, like half a class, or 65 minutes on the tests. Now, if you've got um, uh, permission from the DRC, please send me um, a copy of the letter and then you and I can coordinate uh, offline about um, the extra time that you would need to um, accomplish your quizzes and your tests, it's totally fine. Um, but you'll have, you know, a timed amount of time to complete the quiz or the test. Um, the math department is giving us, um, has told us that we can give 15 to 20 minutes for you to upload, um, take pictures of your work and then upload it. So you get the 30 minutes for the quiz and then you get an additional 15 minutes to um, take a picture of your work and uh, or scan it in, say for example, save it as a PDF and then upload that to our Canvas page. Um, we're all kind of all getting used to Canvas. Um, we just, the Northeastern just switched to Canvas this semester, so I'm getting used to it too. If you have any problems with the upload, you know, um, uh, try it, do your best um, within the time frame. And if you have any doubts about whether or not it worked, send me an email with the attachment with your quiz. Okay, so I can check the time and date stamp and I can actually get your work so I can grade it. And then, you know, you won't get knocked off for, you know, not passing it in. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I think, did I cover the basics of it? Like I said, don't worry about the project just yet. As we go along in the semester, about halfway through, we'll talk about um, what's expected for the project. Okay, and we have a small enough class that um, maybe uh, we can even, like you guys can make videos or we can do presentations on our last day too. But remember, there's no final exam, so um, the pressure's off on that. We just have quizzes and exams. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, what I did also on, <coughs> for our class, and I put that up on our Canvas page, is um, copy down from my notes um, a copy of all of the examples that I do for each chapter section, right? So for each lecture, um, I've typed out what the example is, example one, example two. So as I'm working through the lectures, I'll say, no, I'm gonna do example one. I'll pull out my lecture examples and I'll work it through and then, um, and then I'll put it aside and, or work through whatever. At the end of the day, I'll scan this in. It ha will have all the solutions on it. I'll scan it in and put it up on our Canvas page so you can take a look at it. Um, <clears throat> it's not lecture notes, but it's the next best thing. These um, blank page here, this lecture example page, 
is up on our Canvas page right now. Um, I recommend printing it out before each class um, so that way you have it. And then um, you can take your, um, your examples here or you can just take them in your notes, whatever is easier for you. I found I did this in my um, remote class this summer and it worked out really well. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I can't think of anything else. Um, as we go, you know, um, I'll remind you of things and we'll talk about stuff. Um, I think we're, we're going to try to be flexible, you know, about how things are because it's a really unique situation that we're all in at this point here. Um, and uh, oh, one more thing too, um, I know I talk fast, uh, especially when I get excited. If, um, if you feel like I'm talking too fast and the material is going by too quickly, um, please, you know, unmute your audio and say, could you just slow down for a little bit so that I can, you know, understand what you're saying. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. I will make these recordings um, and I will post them onto our um, <clears throat> Canvas page under lecture videos. Um, so for each week in each lecture, you'll see um, a copy of our lecture videos. I'll also try to post them onto our, um, my YouTube channel um, and hopefully YouTube won't give me a hard time for it. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're starting chapter 1.1, okay. In chapter 1.1, we're going to build up some concepts, okay. Um, the first one is we're going to talk about space, our concept of space, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional space, points, <laughs> like x, y, or x, y, z coordinates, and vectors. It's going to be important that we understand, right, what each of these things are, and how they differentiate from each other so that we can use them to describe all sorts of stuff as we go. Okay. So <clears throat> um, one of the things I like to start talking about um, when I start this class is, you remember like the old um, videos, like the old uh, Walt Disney videos where they showed, you know, Mickey Mouse at the, um, the wheel of a steamship, right? And he's, you know, moving all along and it, and it looks kind of grainy and, and it's really cute and whatever. When they did the old videos, um, they had to make a picture of, Mickey Mouse as he was standing here, take a picture of it, <clears throat> do another drawing where he moved just slightly, take a picture of it, do another drawing, and then like a flip book, you know, so the, the movements are very gradual as we go. Now we have computers, right, so we can um, kind of objectify, you know, um, our, our figures, take, take Mickey Mouse instead of, you know, a mouse, he's like a circle with a couple half circles on top, and so we kind of build up from component pieces, and we can move these pieces around um, in space. So one of the things, examples that I like to think about first is a, um, a boomerang. I think about a boomerang. You remember, it, you know, like the, it looks like this, um, I'm not going to draw very well, this sort of amoeba shaped, you know, piece of wood, you throw it and it, you know, cycles through like this and then it reaches some apex point and then it comes back, right? <clears throat> so as I'm, you know, doing this boomerang, it's like it's moving around. You know, I'm going to really draw this very, um, very crudely. So if I were to draw it in the old way, right, you can imagine this thing is cycling around in some kind of like a circle or an ellipse, right? <clears throat> and so I don't want to draw this, you know, every time, right? But I can think about a boomerang as I've got this sort of center point here that I can conceptualize. That center point is moving in some kind of path, right? It's moving like in a circle or an ellipse or, or just a straight line, depending on how I've thrown it. And then <clears throat> the boomerang itself has a very distinct visual um, orientation, right? So I'm going to draw this, it's like an arrow. So I've got another arrow here where the, the arrow head is that point, right? The arrow stops at that point. So another arrow here, another arrow here. So I've taken this complex <clears throat> shape, the boomerang, and I've reduced it down to a point and an arrow, right? So I can just move the point around. That's my overall path. And the arrow tells me What's my orientation? So then later in my program, I can then fill in the blank. I just got this boomerang picture that I can then replace it as I go. But really, I'm doing the math on these points and on those arrows. So that's what this whole course is going to be about, which is how do we take a complex picture, reduce it down to component pieces, and then what's the math for moving this point around in an ellipse or a circle or some kind of path? And then how do we represent its orientation, like say with an arrow? Okay. So <clears throat> Can represent, can I represent this with two things. One, a point. And this is going to tell me its location in space, right? That point tells me, and also its path, like where it's headed. Its location in space 
as a function of time, right? I can tell me where I'm at. And also an arrow, right? Which tells me it's orientation. We're gonna learn today, you know, instead of calling it an arrow, we're actually gonna call it, it's a mathematical name, is a vector. Okay, so the vector is gonna, we represent it with arrows and it helps us imagine, you know, where is this thing pointing, right? Because a vector um, has a direction. It also has like what we call a size, a shape. So we're going to talk all about this stuff today. It's part of our vocabulary. <clears throat> but let's take a step back. Let's talk about the space aspect of today. And we're going to talk about um, different dimensions. So this is part of our vocabulary. So this class, <clears throat> we deal with mostly two dimensions or three dimensional structures. But all of the math scales up to like, you know, four dimensions, 11 dimensions, whatever. Okay, but it gets harder to draw, right? And, and, and certainly if you're trying to think about your world, your game world, right? You're really only talking about like a two, it's a two dimensional, right? Because it's on a computer screen, but it's a three dimensional world that you're trying to build. So um, all the examples that we do will be in two dimensions or three dimensions. But let's, so we've got like our nomenclature. Let's start off at the beginning. So let's start off with a one dimension. Right, represent one dimension. So one dimension is really just a line, right? A line and and so here's my origin. My origin point. I've got negative numbers, you know, minus two and so on and so forth. I've got positive numbers. You know, here's pi. I mean I can do all sorts of different types of um, representations, but it's essentially a line. Now it's a line we're dealing with real numbers. So we say this is a line composed of all real numbers, right? Real numbers. Technically, because I'm in one dimension, this is really all real numbers in one dimension. I put the dimension up here. As it looks like, you know, like some kind of superscript, but we drop it when it's just one dimension. It's just all real numbers. And you can imagine, right, at, I've got zero to minus one. I've got an infinity of numbers between zero and minus one, okay? So I've got all these, like, numbers here. Our computers use floating point, which even the best of computers, you know, it's a pretty good um, representation of things, but it's still, um, floating point isn't, um, doesn't represent all of the infinity of numbers between, you know, two different particular points here, but it's a pretty good representation. All right. So that's one dimension. Let's talk about two-dimensional. <coughs> Okay, so two dimensions, we think about things like, I'll put it here. Typically, we think about it in terms of our xy plane, right? And this is what we, to consider some kind of a point here. Within our xy plane, we have an ordered pair that represents how far out did I go in the x direction, and then how far up did we go in the y direction, okay? x, y is not the same thing as y, x. y, x is going to be a completely different point, okay? But this is just a, a point in space. It's a very static. It's like a little dot, okay? But it's denoted by how far out did I go on the x, how far up did I go on the y. It's an ordered pair, okay? <clears throat> this here is our origin, and that's it. I've gone zero in the x direction and zero in the y. It seems really basic, right? But it helps to have all of the same vocabulary when we're talking about stuff. Um, <clears throat> put all this stuff on the screen here. All right, so three dimensions. Oh, and then by the way, we reference this. We say all real numbers, and I'm in two dimensional space. So my two dimensions and all real numbers is how we talk about that. For three dimensions, right? We talk about things in terms of all real numbers in three dimensions, right? You can see how this is going to scale. I'm going to say all real numbers in four dimensions, seven dimensions, n dimensions, right? <clears throat> so this is how we talk about our dimensional space. So this is um, an ordered triple, which is an x and a y and a z component. Okay, now some, some places um, we talk about our general x, y axis with z coming out of the page. I tend to draw it um, when I'm drawing it on paper or on a board like this. This is my x-axis, this is my y. So you can imagine, right, 
I'm taking this and I flattened it, right? This is my negative x-axis. This is my negative y-axis. This is my z-axis. Okay, and my negative z-axis goes down in this direction here. Okay. Now, what this looks like is, you can imagine, I would have gone out. Let's say I've got this particular point in three dimensions. That's A, B, C. A, B, C are just some real numbers. So I've gone over A amount in the x direction. <coughs> I've gone over from A, I've gone over B amount in the y direction. And then I've gone up C amount in the z direction. Okay, so the point that I'm trying to do, see, I can, I'm going to draw it like this. So I've got this, got this, got this, and then. These are actually if I start with the box and then work it from there. Um, here, this point right here is our point A, B, C in space. Okay, that's the corner of that box. Okay, I've gone over A, I've gone over B, and I've gone up C in the Z direction. It's my box shape. Okay, so I've plunked it down into a three dimensional axis here. Again, I'll do this in a different color. This spot right here is our origin, and that's at zero, zero, zero. <clears throat> okay, it's important to note what our origin is. Okay, All right, so this is our ordered triplet in three dimensional space, and it looks like this. It's just kind of be able to kind of think about it. And like I said, everything you know scales up into higher dimensions, right? Where our dimension is, you know, greater than or equal to four. All the math scales up to that, but um, I don't know about you, but I have a harder time drawing, even in fourth dimensions. I think I can do um, a four-dimensional, it's not really a cube, but, um, you know, four-dimensional shape. But then after that, like, drawing it is, you know, not going to work. So we just basically focus on two and three dimensions in the class. But like I said, you should know that the math does scale. Okay. Questions on that before I roll on? All right, so let's talk about, that was our space. Let's talk about um, what's the difference between a point and a vector. That's a really important concept. <clears throat> a point and a vector. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. So if I think about, I'm going to go two dimensions, right? So here's my x, here's my y graph. Okay, so I've gone over one in the x direction and one in the y. So I went over one, I went up one. I've got this point. I've got the point one, one. Okay, so the point, it's just a static spot in space. Okay, so our point, right, is a unique um, spot point. <laughs> In space. You can think of it as a single dot. It doesn't doesn't have dimension, right? It's just this like just little spot right there. Okay. It just tells us how far I went over and how far I went up and where I went up in the z direction if it's three dimensions. Okay. But a vector, importantly, it has direction and magnitude. Magnitude is like the size or the length. Direction and magnitude are both mathematical concepts, but we often think about direction as being where this thing is pointing to. So if I start at zero and I end at one, one, my vector looks like this. I'll put it, I'll call it like this V with a line over it. Okay, when we talk about vectors, we give it some label. We tend not to use X or Y if we can help it, you know, unless it has a specific reason, but you can use any variable um, name you want but it has like some kind of arrow over the top, okay? But um, <clears throat> we're gonna actually talk about the mathematical qualities of direction and magnitude. We'll talk about those today, and then we're gonna go through a lot of examples on vectors and stuff, okay? The first concept that I wanna talk about is what's called a displacement vector. A okay, displacement vector means I've started at point A and I've ended at point B, Okay, and then that direction going from A to B and the length, right? So I'm gonna say I started at A, I ended at B, 
right? And this arrow, I draw it as like um, most books do it as like an arrow. You can draw it like this with a full arrow, okay? Or you can do it as like a half arrow. Half arrow is kind of a shortcut. Um, <clears throat> but this label here tells us I've started at A and I've ended at B, okay? So the displacement vector we think of as I have a terminal point minus my initial point. Okay, so my terminal point is B and my initial point is A. That's just how I calculate the displacement vector. Terminal point minus initial point. I'll, I'll put this in a red box. You know, it's important. How do I calculate a displacement vector? Is um, <coughs> terminal point minus my initial point. You know, these have to have the same dimension, right? So this would be an XY ordered pair, XY ordered pair. If I'm trying to mix dimensions, X, Y, and X, Y, Z, then I can't calculate a displacement vector. Um, all right, so now let's think about what A looks like. So A, if I go from A to B, okay, that means A is my initial point. And A could be, I've got an X, I've got a Y, my second component. Maybe I have a Z, which would be a third component. All the way up to, remember how we said this is going to scale up to n dimensions, right? So I'm going up a1, a2, a3. This means like my first component, second component, third component, all the way up to my nth component. All it means is my point in that dimension. <coughs> my b, here it tells us my b is my terminal point. And b has to have the same dimension as a. So I'm going to go b has the first, has the second component, has the third component. And it has an nth component. You see, you notice how this is the same. My, my dimension on both A and B are the same. If I want to calculate a displacement vector from A to B, they have to be the same dimension. So to calculate going from A to B, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say B1 and minus A1, A2, A N. Okay. But what that means is I'm going to subtract corresponding components, right? So this is B1 minus A1, B2 minus A2, and so on and so forth, Bn minus An. And that gives me the displacement vector going from point A to point B. This, if it's unknown to you, don't sweat it. We're going to do a lot of examples, and really, truly, by the time you get done with this class, you're going to know this stuff really well. Okay, so we're just starting this here. All right, so let's take what we've learned, and I'm going to talk about um, pulling out my lecture examples page. So my first example: What's the displacement vector from the point one one to the point three two? So I don't tell you a to b, and this is a equals this, a b equals that, but I say from two. So from this is my initial to the point. This is my terminal. Right. So I'm making notes on the question, right? That's going to help me figure out what's going on. So I'm going to go from 1, 1 to 3, 2. So let's, I'm just going to draw that out really quick, just so I can see. So I've got the point 1, 1. This is 1. So I've got the point 1, 1. And I've got the point 3, 2. Okay, so this is where I'm going. So I want to find out what's the displacement vector going from here to here. Okay, so that's what I want to look at. <coughs> so now, Okay, I'm going to use my formula when we talked about the displacement vector. So I'm going to say terminal minus initial. And I'm going to put things in. So my terminal point, 3, 2, minus 1, 1. So 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1 is going to give me 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. This is a vector. Call it V. Whatever. So this is V right there, okay? So here's point one, here's point two. I made a vector. See how the arrow goes from our initial to our terminal, right? But we calculate the displacement vector as terminal minus initial, okay? <clears throat> We're gonna talk about more stuff as we go. All right, <clears throat> example two, let's take a look at that one. Okay, so example two says, Find the displacement vector and the distance from point one two three to point minus three four. Okay, so this is we're gonna um, we're gonna do the displacement vector first, and then we'll talk about the distance in just a minute because um, that's part of actually how we're calculating the magnitude of things. So 
let's see, this is in three dimensions, so the displacement vector is going to be terminal minus initial. From point, so this is initial, to point, this is our terminal. Okay, so that means I'm going to go like this. My terminal minus three, zero, four, minus my initial, one, two, three. Minus three, minus one, zero, minus two, four, minus three. <clears throat> minus three, minus one, minus four. Zero, minus two, minus two, one. So this is our displacement vector. It's a three dimensional vector, right? So I could draw this out in three dimensions. It gets harder to draw it because I'm going to go minus three in the x direction, zero in the y, and then four in the z direction, right? One, two, and then three, and I'm going to calculate that displacement factor. You don't have to draw these out. Sometimes it can help. Sometimes it can make it more confusing. Um, don't worry about the um, distance just yet. We're going to talk about what that means exactly, because that's part of our whole discussion of um, vectors. Does everybody have this before I take it away and do something else? <coughs> All right, so let's talk about um, two important concepts I said um, vectors have magnitude and direction. So we're going to talk about what those mathematical qualities are. So magnitude of the vector, super important, okay, super important concept. This is like our length of the vector. So we did the displacement vector from here to here. Now that length is going to be our magnitude. And honestly, it's based on our Pythagorean theorem. So you can think about going from here to here, it kind of forms a right triangle, where I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I take the square root, it's going to give me that hypotenuse is our magnitude of the vector. Okay, so one thing to note too, that this is always positive. If when you're doing it, you come up with a negative number for the magnitude or you get an error um, when you're trying to do it because you would have a negative number, um, <clears throat> you know, you did something wrong with your order of operations, and we'll talk about how we can fix that. So let's say um, we're going to do with uh, v as our vector. To calculate the magnitude, to, we say we put it looks like absolute value. I'm going to put absolute value symbols around here, and that's how we say we're taking the magnitude of that vector v. Now, if v has components v1, v2, all the way up to n, v sub n, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first component, I'm going to square it. I'm going to add that to my second component squared, my third component squared, and so on, all the way up to my nth component squared, and then I'm going to take the square root. So the magnitude of our vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of that vector. This is why you'll get an error because like if your components are negative right when i square a negative i get a positive number but if i type it into my calculator my calculator is stupid watch if i go um minus one squared it gives me minus one now i know minus one squared it's going to be minus one squared it's going to be one so be very careful when you're doing these to watch out um, especially if you're cruising through fast on a quiz or on a test make sure you put things in parentheses especially if they're negative numbers so your calculator does the right thing because otherwise you know maybe you won't notice it when you've got the negative number because you're summing it up and then maybe your square root will have like ultimately a positive number but if you've subtracted things inside your square root then you're going to get a wrong answer okay so all of these things each of these once you square it all the all this these pieces here are going to be positive it's just a sort of a reality check in the back of your mind when you're working on things all right, <clears throat> so let's talk about, that's magnitude. Direction is not just where the vector's pointing, but it actually has a mathematical quality to it. We're going to talk about that. Oops, sorry, of a vector. Okay, so now when we talk about direction, we tend to say, we'll call it v hat. This is what they call a hat. v hat equals my vector divided by its magnitude. So I calculate the magnitude. The magnitude is just going to be a number, right? So the vector is this, you know, these components, right? It's x, y, z, whatever, all these different components, but my magnitude is a number. Radical 3, 
10, whatever it comes out to be. I take my vector and I divide it by that magnitude. So every component within my vector gets divided by that magnitude. This is the um, direction. <clears throat> this formula comes into play in other things too. We'll talk about that um, towards the end of class today. And if we don't finish the topic today, then um, we'll continue it tomorrow. We have plenty of time. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, let's talk about um, example three. We'll, we'll come back to this later. Talk about example three, um, vectors versus locations. So we've got this um, point in space. We're gonna calculate displacement vectors. We're gonna calculate um, the magnitude and direction of these displacement vectors. So first I wanna plot this point here. So I'm gonna do, calculate it out, one, two, Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So plot the point four, seven. Okay, so that's just a single point. And then I'm going to write my axes. Here's my x axis. Here's my y axis, right? So I went over four, I went up seven. <clears throat> What's the displacement vector from point zero, zero to point four, seven? Zero, zero is my origin. So I want to make a displacement from. Two. Okay, so um, let's just, I'll call this one V. So V is going to be, right, my two points. So this is my terminal. This is my initial. So V is going to be my terminal minus my initial. I love working with the origin because using, working with zeros makes everything really easy. So my displacement vector is 4, 7. That's V. Okay, it looks like the point, right? So the point four seven is just this dot in space. The vector v equals four seven says I've gone from zero zero to the point four seven. Okay, this vector has a magnitude and a direction which we'll calculate in just a minute. Okay, so that's v. I'll do this one in a different color. What's the display? This is part b. Part c says what's the displacement vector from point one two to five nine? So 0.121 to 59. Right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here to here. And we'll call this one W. Some other variable other than V. I've already used V. Okay, so W says I'm going to go from, this is my initial, to, this is my terminal. So W equals 59 minus. One, two. <clears throat> component to component, which means I'm going to go five minus one, nine minus two. Hmm, look at that. It looks like V, but look, it started here and it ended there. Okay, so it's got a different initial point and a different end point, even though V and W have the same values. Okay, so now we want to know what are the magnitude and direction of these displacement vectors? Really, I only need to calculate it for one because they're going to be the same. But let's go ahead and talk about it. So the magnitude of V, okay, my V is equal to 4, 7. So my component, I take each component and I square it. I sum up those squares and then I take the square root of the sum of those squares. So this is 16, 4 squared, plus 49, which is going to give me 65. That's my magnitude of V. Everybody see that? Okay. <clears throat> w. Um, this is V. My magnitude of W. I'm going to do the same that. I'm just going to write it out. Four squared plus 7 squared. 16 plus 49. Radical 65. Okay, so V and W have the same magnitude. Okay. Now remember direction. This is magnitude. direction. They're obviously going to have the same direction too. So my v hat is going to be my um, v vector, or 7, divided by my direction. Oh, sorry, divided by the magnitude. So this is um, v divided by magnitude. So this is 4, 7, divided by radical 65. Now I can leave it. Some books, we write it like this, 1 over radical 65 times or seven, I can do that. Often what you want to get in the habit of is distributing this number into both so that it looks like four over radical 65, comma, seven over radical 65. 
I mean, that's the direction for V. It's also the direction for W. Because the W has the same components. Um, <clears throat> I know probably uh, your high school teachers beat it into your head that you have to simplify the radical um, and then, you know, uh, rationalize it so you bring the radical up to the top um, by multiplying top and bottom by the radical. Don't worry about it. In this class, this is perfectly acceptable as an answer. And often you're going to want to leave it like this because um, we need to combine these and do things um, with other stuff. So you can leave it like this in what we call simple radical form. You don't have to, please do not turn this into a decimal. I want to see it as a simple radical. Okay. All right. Magnitude and direction. This is an example. The difference between points and um, vectors is that points are unique spots on space, right? So 4, 7 is a unique spot in the space, right? <clears throat> but the vector going from 0, 0 to 4, 7, okay, has a magnitude and direction that's here. And you can also see, you know, 1, 2, and 5, 9, they were unique points as well. But the vector going between those two points is the same vector as these two here, okay? So vectors, right, I can have the same magnitude and direction even though they are in different locations in space. And that becomes important um, later. We're going to talk about that. The vectors are very rich. They have all sorts of information in them. The magnitude and direction tells us an awful lot. And especially if it's a displacement vector, we can um, learn even more about, like, what's happening. Um, questions on this before I turn the page and move on to um, other concepts? Can you explain the direction again? I'm sorry? Can you explain the direction again? Yeah, so <clears throat> direction it means multiple things. Direction means, right, I've started here and I've ended here, my initial point to my terminal point, okay? But direction itself is also a mathematical quantity, right, which is taking the vector components and dividing by the magnitude. This here is what we also call normalizing the vector, where we divide the vector itself by its magnitude. Um, and, and we'll talk about that uh, later. I don't, I don't know if we're going to um, get to it today, but um, <clears throat> it's what we talk about also a unit vector is taking a vector and normalizing it by its magnitude. That's actually the mathematical concept of the direction. Um, so that's what we're doing here. But, it, but really, conceptually speaking, the direction tells us where that vector is pointing, right? I started here, I ended there, okay? Or if the vector isn't, you know, part of part of a line, I can come up with multiple points on that line and say, okay, the vector is between displacement between these po this point and this point here. So it tells us the direction of activity, essentially, okay? direction of movement. <clears throat> Does that help? We're gonna use these terms as we go. So it'll become more familiar, um, certainly, as we talk about stuff. All right, so let's talk about some other concepts here. So we have um, there's some mathematical properties of vectors that we can actually do. So let's talk about some math operations on vectors. Okay, a lot of our initial um, chapter sections, the first several chapter sections, are all of the stuff that we can do with vectors. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about addition and subtraction and what we call scalar multiplication, where I take a number and I multiply it by a vector. vector. What does that mean? Um, we can combine things together using all these different properties. And then in later sections, in chapter one, we're going to talk about um, if I want to multiply two different vectors together, I have to do something special. We'll talk about all that as we go. Okay, so the first math operation we want to talk about is addition. So how do we, um, we kind of did this when we did our displacement vector. So let's talk about um, adding two vectors. So V plus W. <clears throat> the first thing that we have to check is that V and W have the same dimension. Right. If you find yourself adding two vectors, but oh, I've got these extra bits left over, then they're not the same dimension. You can't just, you know, add it and kind of ignore the other bits there. So they have to have the same dimension. You can add a vector in 2D to another vector in 2D, a vector in 3D to another vector in 3D. And like I said, this math scales up to, you know, higher dimensions as well, although we're mostly focusing on um, two and three dimensions. Okay, so now <clears throat> that's our first quality. Second quality is um, we're going to add, you saw this with the displacement vector, add corresponding components. And so if V 
is composed of V1, V2, and so on, out to Vn. And W is composed of W1, W2, and so on, up the way out to Wn, right? So notice they have the same dimension, right? So if I want to add V plus W, I'm going to add V1 plus W1. I'm going to add V2 plus W2 and so on and so forth, all the way out to the end. Okay, so my vector addition is taking the two vectors and adding their corresponding components. I'm going to add my x, I'm going to add my y's together, I'm going to add my z's together, and so on and so forth. Okay, and we're going to talk about what this also means um, graphically, but um, let's give it a couple, we'll do a couple practice examples, and then, um, and then we'll do some graphical stuff too. Okay, so example four right, from our um, lecture example page. We've got a particle just floating around in space. It's initially at this point here, minus two, three, one. And it's displaced by this amount, two minus one. What's its final location? So think about it this way. Our displacement vector, we calculated this before, right? Well, we said our displacement vector was equal to our terminal Point, minus our initial point. Okay, I'm given the displacement vector, two, one, minus one. And I don't know the terminal point. That's what it said. What's its final location? That's my terminal point. Minus my initial point, minus two, three, one. Right? So now I'm going to solve for this one. Okay, so kind of think about this like an algebraic equation. So I need to add minus two, three, one to both sides. Right? So I'm going to add these two vectors together here to find out what's my terminal point. So I'm going to say this is going to look like 2 minus 2, 1, um, 1 plus 3, and then minus 1 plus 1. And that's going to give me my terminal point. Okay. So 2 minus 2, that's 0. 1 plus 3 is 4. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So this is my terminal point, my final location. Okay. So remember how we calculate our displacement vector is terminal minus initial. And I can, you know, manipulate it like it's an equation. Kind of think about it like my initial point, which is minus two, three, one. And I've been displaced. My vector v equals 2, 1, minus 1, and then my final point. Okay, and that's what we just solved here, which was 0, 4, 0. <clears throat> right, before when we did the example, I gave you initial point, terminal point, and said, what's the displacement vector? This time I gave you the initial point and the displacement vector and asked you what's the terminal point. So we're manipulating things around. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Simple five, right? We've got a particle is displaced by three, two, and then by two minus one. So I don't even know where it started or where it ended. I just know it's been displaced a couple of times. So I want to know what's the net displacement. Okay, so I'm going to add both of these vectors together. Add both displacement vectors together. Get our net, our total displacement. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to go three comma two plus two minus one, which gives me a component to component three plus two, two minus one, three plus two, five, two minus one, one. So that's the total displacement that I have on this particle, right? Because I displaced it a little bit and then I displaced it a little bit more, displaced it by this much. Okay. <clears throat> So pretty easy one, this is in three dimensions. We're gonna do this. So I'm gonna add these two together, component by component. One plus seven, three plus zero, five plus eight, okay? One plus seven, three plus zero, five plus eight. Okay, three dimensions, okay? All right, so we'll talk about the parallelogram rule. So everybody have, I'll give you guys a minute to finish writing that down.
Okay, so do you need more time to keep writing? Or can I move the page? I can't see who's writing and who's not. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So with addition, there's a thing called the parallelogram rule. So we're working with vectors, not just like regular numbers. So let's talk about that parallelogram rule. What does that look like? Okay, so let's imagine I have a coordinate axis. Here's my x, here's my y. Okay. Now imagine I have a vector. Let me draw it like this. My vector v, and then I have another vector. W. Okay. The parallelogram rule says <clears throat> this W is actually parallel to another W this way. This is another W vector. This V is actually parallel to another V that way. Okay. Which means I can redraw it like this. My X, my Y. So here's my V vector. I'm going to draw it out like here's my W. We tend to think of W and V as having an initial point right here. Okay, it makes it easier to think about. So I can kind of do this parallelogram this way. Here's the other parallelogram. So this is our W and this is our V. Okay, now what happens is, oh, oh I drew it. Up. So now what happens is V plus W is the length of the diagonal. Okay, is the length of the diagonal on those. Okay, so this is like vector geometry. And this is going to, visualization is going to help you when you think about um, uh, how we do subtraction too. We're going to talk about that. Um, we'll see, probably won't get to it today. But remember, I've got V and W, and it just happened that it, lined, that it lined up on here. Like you can imagine if I have vector V and vector W, right, and they form like a parallelogram, the diagonal, okay, is their addition. Okay, so V plus W is the length of that diagonal. And we call it, it's the parallelogram that's spanned by vector V and vector W. We don't say it's made up of V and W because V is a vector. It's going in this direction. W is a vector. It's going in this direction. If we want to get, we're going to do other geometry on these parallelograms later. And when, so I want to calculate the area of the parallelogram. I need to figure out the magnitude of V and the magnitude of W to do any like area type stuff. But for now, that's why we say it's spanned by V and W. It's just a vocabulary from linear algebra that we pull. <clears throat> All right, so let's do, I'll show you the graphical. We're going to add the two vectors, y equals 2, 3, and x equals 4. When I actually chose x and y as vector names specifically to take them out of the x, y axis, you know, component. So let's draw this and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay. Um, three, four, five. Oops, sorry. I didn't realize you guys can see it. Five. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to plot, you know, this vector here. So this vector is um, two and three. Because remember, y is a vector, and I'll draw it in green. Y is a vector. I'm going to draw y this way. Here's y. And then I'll draw um, x in red here. So x is, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1. There's my x. x like that. Okay. So now, let's see if I have another color. Okay. Okay. So now let's do this. We're going to add y plus x. So that's 2, 3 plus 4, 1. So I'm going to go component by component. 2 plus 4, 3 plus 1. Which the addition is equal to 6, 4. So let me plot that out. I'm going to try to use a different color here. So 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's our vector here. Okay, so that's what that vector looks like. Now imagine, right, um, this is x like that. Okay. So now imagine, right, that I've got another y there and I've got another x. So you see how it forms a parallelogram, right? 
with this line is parallel to this line. This line is parallel to that line. We'll talk about parallel aspects um, a little bit. Um, and then their addition is the diagonal of that parallelogram. Okay, but we can see it here. The addition of y plus x is also a vector. Okay, so when I add two vectors, I get a vector. It isn't just a point, it's a vector, right? And that's the diagonal of that parallelogram. Okay. <coughs> How are you guys doing? Everybody doing okay? Pretty quiet. All right, so um, we're actually coming up close on the end of the time, and then I want to be able to talk about um, scalar multiplication as our next topic. So what I'm going to do is we have plenty of time on our syllabus. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue. I'm going to pick up this topic tomorrow um, with talking about scalar multiplication. And then um, I'll, you know, I'll basically I'll wait, I'll scan in this whole lecture example page when we're done um, with all of the lecture examples, so it's a complete set. Um, but in the meantime, you guys can look at the video, you can start filling things in. So we'll pick up with um, our next topic, part of chapter 1.1 tomorrow, and that'll be scalar multiplication. Okay. You guys all set? All right. So we didn't have time to do classwork today. It's totally fine. We'll probably have time to do some classwork tomorrow. Um, and like I said, classwork is, um, is one of those things where um, I just want you to kind of try it. It's gonna help you, um, you know, play around with it. But, um, it, you know, the due dates are just things that I, you know, plugged in online just to make sure that, because um, the assignment needed a due date, but it's all very flexible. Um, anyway, with that said, uh, I'm gonna quit for today and then we'll pick up this discussion tomorrow, okay? Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.